So we're going to look at the 2007 Transformers movie, the start of the live action era, where this wonderful visionary came in and revolutionised cinema for a new breed of Transformers fans, depending who you talk to. And within this, as we know, there is this new super entity known as the AllSpark, which started off as the Cube. Now, not going into too much lore here, but this was going to be the new ominous being or ominous object that had its own power that was really taking over from a matrix of generation one or even a vector sigma this cube the all spark had such ability to create life and really was a life essence for transformers so as we know going on the cube would be shrunk down into the all spark and the decepticons would try to get it the autobots would try to stop them from getting it so what if megatron did get his hands on it what if Megatron got the AllSpark? How would this change from the 2007 movie onwards? Welcome to the other side of the Matrix. The other side of the Matrix. We'll start off with one of my most famous lines from these movies, where Sam Witwicky is being defiant and actually says to Megatron, I'm never giving you this AllSpark! So unwise. But let's say from this point onwards that Megatron does actually manage to send Sam Witwicky to his untimely death. Now, earlier in this scene in the film, Optimus is currently lying in a feeble state. He's been beaten up by Megatron and he's lying down there licking his wounds, basically. So let's just say that Megatron takes a swipe off the building, Sam falls to his untimely demise, and then picks up the AllSpark, which is just laying there. Now at this point we're seeing that the AllSpark can really do whatever you want it to do, but really it's given the ability to create new life at a moment's notice. We see an Xbox come to life for no reason at all. So, in terms of this battle and where we leave off and where this timeline is going to go on to, there is still the battle between the Decepticons, the Autobots, with the humans fighting alongside the Autobots, at this point, the Decepticons are really winning. The Autobots and the humans are struggling to hold a fight against them. When Optimus turns up, things naturally change, but still not too much. So when Megatron gets a hold of the AllSpark, the first thing I think he would do is he would resurrect any of his fallen comrades. Blackout is down at this point, and Starscream has sustained damage instantly. They will be rejuvenated and repaired to take the fight back to the Autobots. Any other fallen comrades will instantly be back into the fight as well, and then he'll just look at new ones. So in this you will have lying around cars that are just stricken there. They will be instantly turned into Decepticon forces to take the fight to the Autobots and the humans. This would be such an overwhelming battle for what is now probably three and a half Autobots. Jazz is currently in two pieces at this point, one of the most grotesque killing in Transformers movie history mostly. After 86 of course. But then what's left of the Autobots with the human forces really isn't enough to fight the Decepticons on a good day, much less with a super-powered Megatron with the AllSpark doing really whatever he wants it to do. So this would leave the Autobots to have to retreat and this city, wherever they are, would fall under Decepticon control. And this would be start of a big tide change in terms of the live action movies and how the Decepticons are progressing through. So really ending the first film and going into the second live action movie, The Revenge of the Fallen, you're going to see no big victory. You're not going to see Megatron decapitated or frozen in ice or submerged because he's going to have the AllSpark. No one can really touch him at this point and the Autobots in the first film didn't have a lot that they could counter with. There was no Matrix by this time. So, really, the first film is likely to end with the Decepticon forces on Earth growing exponentially. And anyone, anything, can become effectively a Decepticon. And they will just have overwhelming numbers for the Autobots and humans to be unable to put up a sustained fight. This would lead to the Autobots and the humans working closer together, but ultimately having to find a bit of a last refuge, in possibly an underground base or somewhere, somewhere belonging to Sector 7, that they would have to kind of get their forces together to mount any kind of resistance. This really comes into play more when we get into the live action movie, the second film, The Revenge of the Fallen. Now, 
Not my particularly favourite idea, I like to feel Megatron as having no overlord, no superior. He belongs to nobody. But with that, now what would Megatron do? He would possibly, even this Megatron, who would seem very susceptible to fall to another leadership, this is a very powerful Megatron now. He hasn't really got an equal, so at this point he could rejuvenate the Fallen to form a glory, to be one of the 13, or he could even use the Allspark to usurp the Fallen. Now that would be very interesting. You could not get this Decepticon god rallying the Decepticon forces. Megatron in turn could be that god. And how this would really change going into the second film. It would have to take the Autobots to really bring along anyone and everyone they could think of. It would need Optimus and Jetfire to still combine with the Matrix to even stand a remote chance. Really with this is the power of the Allspark is shown exponentially. The Decepticon forces would get stronger and effectively be unable to die. Any damage that the Autobots could sustain on the Decepticons could instantly be reversed and they would just be rejuvenated again. The only way this would change is if Megatron loses the Allspark and this would all have to come to a head with Optimus, Jetfire's added components and the Matrix to stand a chance. And this would be a one-on-one -on -one fight, as it always should be, with an Allspark-powered Megatron and a Matrix-powered Optimus Prime. When the two of them meet, who knows how that's going to end up. I'd like to think for the sake of balance that possibly Optimus could win that one, but it would take to the second film, at least, for Megatron to be handed his first loss in one-on-one -on -one combat. That Allspark at the end of the first film would have a big, significant tide. At a time when the Decepticons were probably stronger anyway, but the Autobots didn't have a lot to fight against other than maybe a few more troops on the Decepticon side than the Autobots. But with the Matrix in the second film going against the Allspark, it becomes a level playing field once again. This Allspark is a bit overbearing in the Decepticon's hands. It's safe to say that there would be casualties on the Autobot side. In the first film we lost Jazz pretty quickly. You can imagine a Allspark empowered Megatron with the likes of Ironhide and Ratchet would possibly soon follow. Maybe even Bumblebee, but it's possibly Optimus with a Matrix that he'd have to get really with the help of Sam Witwicky, so I don't know if that's really going to still be a thing. Would Optimus still get the Matrix later on? It would take that to counter Megatron with the Allspark. It is a bit of a bleak picture when you put it together, but at least in this timeline, you would say the Decepticons are already quite strong and they're built up quite strong in these films. If they get their hands on the Allspark, it will kind of mean a disaster doomsday for the Autobots. How this goes on, and if Megatron still keeps the Allspark into the third action movie and beyond, there's a longer story there. I mean, would Sentinel Prime even be a match for Megatron with the Allspark? Possibly not. If Optimus is so easily defeated, even with the Matrix, you'd imagine Sentinel Prime would fall as well. How does this fall in with the Quintessons? Quintessa, perhaps. How does it even build up to a Unicron ending? This feels quite monumental, having this one cube in possession by a very ruthless leader. You feel there is significant turning points throughout that really could change the whole script of five or six films worth. It really is a deep discussion that you could have to look into each film and each narrative separately to see quite how far the ripples would be felt. Perhaps if the Dinobots are summoned by Optimus Prime a bit earlier than Age of Extinction, perhaps a team of dinosaurs that Optimus can ride into battle, that would make a difference. They are certainly a mighty force even in the movies. That would possibly allow Optimus Prime to get close enough to take the Allspark away from him. And if that changes, the tide changes once more. This power seems to be absolute. Well, we don't really know the full extent of what the Allspark can do in the hands of an Optimus, a Megatron, or Bumblebee, or anyone else. It seems to do whatever the inhabitant wants it to do, whether it's to cause destruction, cause creation, or to simply float into space. The options are limitless. But there you go, that's what would happen in one possible universe if Megatron got the Allspark at the end of the 2007 Transformers film. What do you guys think? Do you think this scenario would actually play out? Do you think another one would play out? Again, there is many possibilities here. I'm sure if you guys can think of something a bit different, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think and how that timeline would play out. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and hit that subscribe button and I will see you on the next one.